Hi guys, welcome back. We're talking with, about stages of faith uh, according to James Fowler. Great book, if you can get it. And um, this today we're talking about the third stage, which is synthetic conventional. Now, this usually happens during adolescence or the teen years, with most people anyway. Uh, this is where you start mixing with other people, you know, and talking about ideas and things like that. And things start to get all mixed up, which is why you know, uh, which which is why cults like to isolate people and keep them keep their people separated from others so that they don't get any, you know, bad ideas from from others from outsiders. Uh, this is why they often ghettoize their people and keep them shut up in their own community and warn them that uh, they shouldn't make friends with unbelievers or you know they shouldn't associate with sinners. One bad apple can spoil the batch kind of thing. You know, maybe you've been there. I know I've been there. So to, in order to stop this uh, cross-pollination from happening, they restrict your movement and ask you not to fellowship with others. That way, uh, you can be taught and you can believe totally unrestricted and without interference from any other signals. In fact, you know, this. just the other day I was talking with a woman who was told to not fellowship with those outside the church. And uh, she looked at him kind of weird because she was new there. And, and uh, she said, what? They said, you're not allowed, you shouldn't uh, fellowship with those outside the church. And she had to make a choice. And she said, well, I, I, I want to see my friends. And basically they ostracized her even while she was still going. And to the point where, you know, she eventually uh, just decided to leave. So it, it's still happening. It still happens to this day. But this is the this is the stage that sort of the church considers or your religion can consider dangerous, where you start mixing with other ideas and you, maybe you start experiencing some confusion. So what a lot of people do is they, they find themselves inside a box. But the problem is you don't know you're in a box. You know, the, the problem with the box is you don't know you're in it. The problem with uh, being blind is that uh, you don't know you can't see, um, you know, if you've been blind your whole life. And uh, it's the same with a lot of people in spirituality. They don't know there's other options. They don't know there's something else on the other side of the fence or outside the box because they don't even know there's a box and they don't even realize it's a fence. And, um, you know, even as, even if our boxes get bigger as we spiritually grow, eventually we come to the place where we realize it's just a box. But while we're in that box, we're comfortable with that box, we believe in that box, other boxes are wrong or heretical or sinful or whatever. We just try to figure out how to deal with it. And at this stage, synthetic conventional stage, is where we have authorities leaders, teachers, mentors, gurus, who reestablish us in our own belief systems. It's, it's conventional. We, we comply. We adhere to convention. We conform to the community. You know, <laughs> it's at this adolescent or, you know, teen years, pre-adult, where we start testing the boundaries. And this is where we realize, you know, either I'm in, or I'm out. I can't sit on the fence here. You know, either I'm I'm going to conform outwardly anyway and fit into the group, or I'm going to disagree and rebel and I'm going to be, you know, rejected. Those are those are the options, and you know it, and I know it. So, and the so the us and them is still, everything's still black and white. There's we who believe and those who don't. You know, I, I remember this, you know, growing up in the church and in the Baptist churches and the Pentecostal churches and even Presbyterian and, you know, independent and vineyard that we were it. You know, we were, we were the way. And everybody was misled or blind or lost or you name it. It's very us and them. And that's the way we keep our beliefs secure. We avoid questions. We keep those questions at bay. We 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 try not to get mixed up. We you know. And I remember I remember too when I was just ordained. I, I might have been 25 or 26 years old. And I was meeting with a guy, 
uh, actually is a university professor, and I was reading, I said, I was reading this book on Buddhism. He goes, oh, what, what, you shouldn't be reading that book. You, Christianity provides enough reading. You don't need to be reading that. And I felt uh, corrected and scolded and put in my place. So it's just a young guy. And, uh, but that's, that's the way, you know, we're, we're raised where we don't need anything else. We, it, we're totally self-sufficient. We don't, you know, we're, we're, we're our own community and we provide for ourselves and we teach ourselves and anything from the outside is pollution and we should avoid it at all costs. Most people, uh, Fowler concluded that most people, uh, remain here. Um, I agree. I think I agree. Most people remain here. Most churches, I claim, um, most churches, I would safely say, uh, want to keep people here. Most churches are um, happy keeping people in this place of sort of ghettoized. We have our beliefs. We have our teaching. We have our expectations. We have our boundaries. We have our rules. Whatever. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people stay here and a lot of churches ensure that they do. Synthetic conventional stage. That's stage three. So we're going to get on to stage four. See you there. Bye.